Hey everyone, it's Miss Queen Crypto and I am back again for another weekly episode of Friday Block Talk here on the Emily channel. Thank you guys for tuning in again. Today I wanted to talk about the environmental implications of Bitcoin because I think that that's an important thing to discuss as a community. Obviously, we all are advocates for Bitcoin and want Bitcoin to succeed and become adopted in the future by on a larger scale than it currently is, but part of that is we have to look at current issues that there are with Bitcoin and how we can resolve those moving forward so that it can become a global worldwide currency. So, with that, let's get into it. What I mean when I say the environmental impacts of Bitcoin is the mining process. Now, when we're talking about Bitcoin in general, transactions through Bitcoin, that all has to go through the mining process. The mining process is how a transaction is approved and then put in the blockchain. And so, in order for Bitcoin to work at all, the mining process has to be intact and it has to be working. Now, there haven't been issues with that. However, if you don't know much about the mining process and you don't really know like the technicals of how it works, I'm going to do a quick little rundown so we can understand a couple things later down the road. But basically, there is this 64-digit strand of numbers and letters that each computer around the world that is part of the mining process, whether it's an individual computer in someone's home or part of a huge mining rig, their goal is to be the first one to find the specific 64 digit string first. And that's called the nonce. It's called the number used once and it that's like the key to solving the block. If you're the first person to get the 64 digit string, you get the block reward, which at this point is like 6.25 bitcoin and it's supposed to happen every 10 minutes. And so the difficulty of this string of numbers and letters is supposed to change depending on how many people are mining, how many computers are mining, and it's supposed to adjust the difficulty. There's a mathematical algorithm that Satoshi has talked about in the white paper that changes the difficulty so that it's set at like a 10 minute time frame, which makes sense because you don't want people being able to mine every two seconds. We would get to the cap way faster than anticipated. It just it, it's a smart decision to make to have that be a variable thing, the difficulty. But because of that, as we get more and more computers involved in mining and mining becomes a bigger ordeal as the price of Bitcoin goes up, obviously there is more demand for mining. There's more incentive to mine. And so we get more and more computers mining. That obviously means that more energy, more electricity is being dedicated to Bitcoin mining in order to achieve the same end goal, which is one block being approved in the transaction. Like one Bitcoin transaction being approved, one set of Bitcoin transactions being approved. Now, because there are so many computers that are running at once trying to achieve the same thing, you have to be smart about it if you want to be the individual or the company that gets the prize for that. And so you have to step up your game. And we get to this sort of arms race where there are people trying to figure out like what is the best computer, what is the best situation for mining, how can I maximize my opportunity and my possibility of getting the block reward. And that's where this arms race comes into place. But obviously more advanced computers a lot of the time also require more energy expenditure. And so we get even more in like a tricky situation because Oh no, there are more and more there are more computers than ever that are using that are being used in the mining process and they're also using more energy than they might have been in the past. It's no longer a passive process that you can have over plugged in on your wall. There are huge corporations that are built and their entire purpose is to get the block reward. And so that's the problem that we see here and we hear scary numbers. I know every once in a while I see something on Twitter about how like the Bitcoin mining process takes up more energy than like Google, Facebook and Twitter all combined and stuff like that and how Bitcoin's energy expenditure is higher than some countries like Sweden but those can be scary and in the end I feel like the Bitcoin community gets very defensive when we hear things like that 
And I don't know if that is the best approach. I know not everyone, this is a blanket statement that might not be fair to many individuals out there, but that defensiveness and that not willingness to admit that there is a problem that needs to be solved. Obviously the problem is not to cease Bitcoin mining. However, there is a problem about energy expenditure in regards to Bitcoin mining. There are things we can do about it. And so first admitting that there's a problem is the best step to actually fixing something. When we're talking about making Bitcoin more sustainable and more green, which I know are terms that not everyone might like and might prioritize, but there are kind of two roads we can go down or we can go down both at the same time, but there are two main approaches. And first is changing the hardware of the system, like changing the computers themselves that are being used to mine, changing the locations, trying to figure out like a solution in the physical world. The other type of solutions that we can try and find are changing the actual blockchain and how these blocks are mined and creating a fork in the blockchain, basically. That's the only other solution we have. And when I'm talking about that, I the main thing that comes to mind is Ethereum, with the proposed proof of stake concept. Now, if you haven't heard very much about proof of stake, it's basically, it's antagonizing or like in comparison to proof of work, which is the whole 64 digit string of numbers and you require computational power in order to solve it. Instead, that you wouldn't have to do that. You would stake or like you would kind of gamble in a sense. You would gamble, not really gamble, but you put up however much that you want to, and that ups your chances of getting the reward. And so it's almost like a lottery, and the more that you put in, the higher your chances of getting the reward are. And when we look at it with our like little green colored glasses, our green tinted glasses, that seems great because you're cutting down on a bunch of unnecessary energy expenditure, and you're getting almost the exact same outcome for it. However, when we take those glasses off, it seems like a less practical application and it doesn't necessarily seem true to the underlying goals and concepts of Bitcoin and especially the decentralization part of that because if everyone who has a lot of money and a lot of stake in Ethereum it are the people who are getting the rewards you get to a point where there are a couple of people who are basically controlling the mining process and that's not what we want. That's not the goal of Bitcoin. Bitcoin actively tries to work against that. And so moving from proof of work to proof of stake for Bitcoin, at least, doesn't seem like a viable option in order to stay true to the concepts and what Bitcoin is trying to actually do. But then we get to trying to change things in the physical world rather than just on the computer in the code. And we also run into issues because Changing a large scale operation takes a lot of capital investment and currently there just aren't very many incentives to do that. So we run into that issue because, oh, there are a couple of great options that are put into place. However, it takes money, it costs money and you don't want to spend money that you don't need to spend money. If it's not broken, don't fix it. That's the underlying like sentiment for a lot of people who own mining rigs and people that are actually in the mining process. So we're kind of in this little like gridlock type of situation where there's dissenting opinions on what should or should not be done, whether it's even a problem that needs to be fixed. I am personally of the opinion that we should be working towards making Bitcoin more sustainable if we want it to be the currency of the future. If we want that truly to be the case, then I think that we should be doing everything in our power to make it even more accessible and make that possible. I know that there are various organizations out there that are trying to implement greener policies for Bitcoin and I commend them and all the work that they're doing, but it's still not a super widespread opinion that something needs to be done. Again, I think that a lot of us get defensive when we hear that because we see it as an attack on our ideals and everything that we stand for. But you can you can take that head on and say, yeah, there are things that need to be fixed and we can work towards those as a community, as a group, in order to make this something that works for everyone and not just some people. 
So with that, I think that's kind of a good spot to leave off on. But if you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate you watching. And I would also really appreciate it if you would leave a like. If you want to see more videos, you should totally subscribe to the Emily channel. I put out a video every Friday. So if you want to tune in next Friday, you'll see another one. And if you want to see more content from me specifically, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Miss Queen Crypto. But I really, really appreciate you watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.